आइए थैंक यू सी I graduated from Army Medical College in October 2021 with a bachelor in dental sciences. I graduated with a, a silver medal in oral surgery and a distinction in oral medicine also as the battalion dental senior under officer cadet which was the senior most cadet in all uh, BDS courses at the time in the college at that time. Other than that in my humble capacity I co-founded an NGO called Idrak which pioneered the buddy program for street child education in Rawalpindi. Uh, we uh, did, we disburse around sixty thousand rupees to different schools per month. Uh, in my free time, I'm a writer and I play football. I founded a blog called Pen and Paper where I write on social and political issues of national interest. And in football, I was lucky enough to play in under fourteen, under sixteen age groups in Salkot. Went on to captain my school, college, and university football teams. Thank you. You tell me, you had a professional degree. Yes, sir. And how you thought? What is your inspiration to join the civil services? Sir, uh, my inspiration is uh, derived from three different sources. One is personal. That is my family. Both of my parents are administrators. I'm very much inspired by the careers they have led, the struggles, and I know they'll be very proud to see me in the civil services. Second was it was a career choice. I believe the civil service is a very provides a very dynamic career path with the uh, potential for self actualization uh, and um, it also with potential for serving serving your uh, uh, broader society and third it was a consideration uh, when i was serving my patients i was able to treat 50 patients 100 patients per day i was able to relieve their pain but i saw there were much other factors in the society that were impacting their lives uh, and i felt that i could play a more, bigger role if i was able to join the civil service and play a part in shaping those uh, factors that impact their lives that is the reason to join the civil services of pakistan yes sir broadly okay tell us about pakistan what do you know about pakistan how you will introduce your country to all of us sir uh, pakistan it is a country situated in the southeast uh, almost 75 years old country with of diverse ethnicities linguistic um, variety cultural variety country rich in natural and human resource uh, and it is uh, situated both at a geo strategic gateway at the confluence of the middle east and central asia and it is a country with tremendous potential uh, which has thus far been underutilized uh, partly due to the our own mistakes our own mismanagement and also due to a harsh external climate where we are uh, we have to contend with certain geo strategic realities that uh, that force our hand in many ways uh, and the potential of the country can be seen in its achievements in different fields we have um, we have scientists of the caliber of dr abdul salam we have sportsmen of the caliber of jangir khan jan sher khan our cricket team is one of the best teams in the world we have great potential in tourism five peaks greater than 8000 feet uh, in height and we have an expert population that is one of the most pro- productive diasporas in the world so it is a country rich in potential albeit the potential is unfulfilled but it will be fulfilled inshallah with due diligence due, due diligence in the future now currently we are facing a political yes sir turmoil i will say yes sir the provincial assembly of punjab and kpk have been dissolved yes sir there is a dispute and it has landed in the supreme court yes sir what is your uptake what are the d- issue of determination for the supreme court sir uh, the issue of primary issue of determination is that who is to set the dates for the election because there is an ambiguity there the governors of both provinces say that since they were not part of the process in dissolving the assemblies they felt that they didn't dissolve the assemblies 
and the two days after dissolution ran out. So they take the stance that we are not going to announce the election dates. The president then unilaterally announced the election dates under Section 57 of Election Act 2017. So this is a procedural and constitutional issue that is in front of the Supreme Court. Similarly, Supreme Court had to take this so moto notice because there was a risk of violation of the constitution. The 90 day time period that was that is in the constitution after dissolution of assembly within which the elections have to be held was at the risk of lapsing if the inaction that was being seen prevailed. So it was it was a, a step of great urgency in order to preempt any such measures that would lead the country to further political instability. Welcome to CSP's Academy for CSS PMS preparation. CSS PMS Tehreeri Imtihan ke tamam mazameen ki online aur on campus tayari ke saath saath subject selection, assignment checking, class test, mock exam, individual teacher discussion aur feedback session ka inakaab kiya jayega. Iske alawa FPSC ki tajweez karda books se bane mayari notes aur CSP's publisher ki behtereen books mohaiya ki jayengi. Tala, you are uh, representing the petitioners. Yes, sir. Before the Supreme Court. Yes, sir. And the issue of advice of the Chief Minister under the Constitution. Yes, sir. To the Governor, which was received in the Governor office. Yes, sir. What will be your argument? Sir, my argument would be I would take uh, uh, take support from the legal point of view that there is a signed summary uh, given forwarded by the chief minister uh, in which the, the chief minister signed the assembly and sent it to the governor. There are no uh, situations or no plausible conditions where you can say that it was under duress or uh, it was uh, it was forced upon him. It was of his own consent. The chief minister has recently emerged. Uh, his political, he's uh, joined the uh, Pakistan Tariq and Saf as well, the former chief minister. So the arguments that the opposition is saying that it was under duress or it was forced or they didn't want to uh, dissolve the assembly, they stand null and void by the simple signature that is on the legal document that is. What is the, how you will differentiate the office of governor and the chief minister? What are the pros and cons for both offices? Sir, the office of the chief minister is the true, uh, ex with the true executive power in the province, while the office of the, of the governor is the constitutional head of the province, but it does not have its, its own original powers, other than acting on certain uh, summaries that are forwarded by the chief minister. It can be said that it is uh, a post uh, uh, postmaster office where it forwards, signs those assemblies and forwards them for action. Uh, because they are the uh, uh, head of the uh, province. But the original power lies with the chief minister. And this who is the elected? Who is the elected? Elected and head of the... Yes, sir. And the governor Representative the, of the people. Yes, sir. Governor is the appointed representative of the president towards the federating components. Look into the national, international scene. Yes, there sir. is a Ukraine war going on. Who are the beneficiaries of this war? So the f beneficiaries of this war first would be the military industrial complexes that exist in different countries because they are able to sell their uh, products and there is a hysteria. <clears throat> Second, I believe in the current situation, Russia is the beneficiary. The people of Ukraine stand to lose because they have to pay a large human cost. They will potentially have to pay a territorial cost as well if the annexation of Donbass and Crimea gets international recognition. And uh, the uh, other, um, the loss losers of this war, other than the Ukrainian people, would be the developing world because the prices have skyrocketed across the world. There has been a commodity super cycle. So, but the de the developed countries, they are still they have their economies in order. But Europe is also suffering. So it is suffering, but not to the extent the suffering we see in the developing world. And Europe, okay, Europe can have, this can be an inconvenience for Europe, we can say. But Europe has its geostrategic goals. Primarily, the US has its geostrategic goals to single out uh, and isolate Russia. Europe, in the US is making money. Yes, they are making money, sir. So I believe the, uh, the President Zelensky has to 
take the this into consideration that other people who do not have direct stake in the war they might stand to win from it but ultimately the losers so how you will explain the pakistan situation are we the loser or the gainer Sir, in terms of the effects that it has on our economy and the tail tailspin that we have seen, we definitely are seeing a lot of uh, a lot of effects of that war in Pakistan. But Pakistan has had to tread a difficult balancing game because Pakistan had good relations with Ukraine. We used to buy wheat from from Ukraine as well, and Pakistan wanted good relations with Russia in the future. We were moving in that direction. So this uh, Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, Uh, thrust Pakistan into a very uncomfortable uh, position on the international <clears throat> scene because then we have to uh, we have to play out a dif- difficult balancing game as demonstrated by the recent vote <clears throat> on this UN resolution for the peace pr- proposal by Ukraine where we had to again abstain and we could not abstain in categorical terms we said that we agree with what has been said but um, it, it has to take into consideration Russian grievances. that we agree with the spirit but not the substance of the resolution so it's a very difficult balancing game in foreign policy for pakistan give your career a boost with css pms preparation from civil services preparatory school join css pms for on campus and online classes join us for your bright future civil services preparatory school jitan markaz islamabad register now at 0316 5701593 Tell how do you see the future of democracy in Pakistan So I see the the future of democracy in Pakistan although in the short term it seems to be a bit dark a bit imperiled but if the process is continued to roll out I believe it is only better for the democracy that we go through these small shocks we go through this turbulence because after these hardships um there will be an institutional memory in different parts of the country in different political segments they will know not to repeat these mistakes and the process if it survives this turbulence it will only emerge out to be stronger people are getting more involved in the process um the political culture is changing from a subject to more participatory political culture so i believe these are all omens of uh, good progress and in the long term long run we might see that this particular phase of difficulty led to great ease in the future thank you appreciate president president zelensky yesterday yes, said that uh, ukraine will defeat russia this year yes sir and he said it while uh, german battle tanks were being handed over yes sir to the ukrainian army yes sir how do you see this for the peace of the world so for the peace of the world the longer the war goes on it is uh, it is likely that it may it might spill over or there is a risk of the nuclear element of the war coming into play when russia feels threatened to to an extent that it has to use the nuclear option we have already seen the suspension of new start so for the world peace it is it is not it, not, it is not looking good but i also feel that it is not good for the region at large because ukraine currently it seems that the best option ukraine most realistic option has to keep russia to a stalemate where russia cannot make fast um, offensive the spring offensive that coming in russia cannot make fast gains but it is highly unrealistic to expect that ukraine will reverse all the gains that russia has already made or ukraine will defeat uh, russia and we have also to consider what will entail a defeat will it be an invasion of russian mainland will it be an expulsion of russian uh, forces will it be ukraine joining nato and russia being okay with it so these are all unrealistic um, uh, uh, pro- projections which i do not feel bode well for the world peace in the long run welcome to csps academy for css pms preparation css pms tehreeri imtihan ke tamam mazamin ki online aur on campus taiyari ke sath sath subject selection assignment checking class test mock exam individual teacher discussion aur feedback session ka inaqaad kiya jayega iske alawa fpsc ki tajweez karda books se bane maiari notes aur csp publisher ki behtareen books muhaiya ki jayengi
how will you define a policy sir a policy is um, a policy is a broad consideration of the environment and a broad setting of the parameters through which you have to achieve certain goals and objectives it can also enlist a state or an individual or a group's approach towards a certain challenge and how it will solve it so it is a broad term under which all these um, this parameters the the premises okay how are po- policy formulated and implemented sir on a national level uh, policies are formulated with the input of different departments in which uh, bureaucracy has its input they also take input of different stakeholders such as the civil society then uh, a broad framework is agreed upon it is presented to the legislators the legislators argue over it debate over it and within the department there are revisions and afterwards when it is approved by the highest most executive authorities it become policy while on a departmental level or on an organizational level it again goes through the different components of that department uh, or, or that organization and has to have approval of the but why policies they are not fully implemented they are left you see just in the middle sir uh, policies to, can be to uh, take this luxury of using this word they can be considered to be wish lists of what you will what you want to happen and what you project to happen you can uh, you can um, estimate what challenges you will face but it, in reality practical reality can always change as the murphy's law says what will what can go wrong will always go wrong so sometimes certain challenges that are not foreseen Really. Can you tell us about some of the administrative reforms proposed by Dr. Ishis Hussain? He was heading that high-powered uh, yes, committee for administrative reforms. Yes, so he sir. proposed some some reforms, and some of the reforms have been impl- implemented also. Yes, sir. Some of the reforms that uh, he proposed were that there has to be the uh, surface de- service delivery has to be more. people friendly and it has to be more efficient then he also uh, proposed that there have to be mid uh, mid career courses for promotions and there have to be mid career courses uh, in order to make the structure of the civil services more like a pyramid that is for, that is followed in the military where there is a large base but the apex is narrow and then he also proposed certain uh, reforms in the uh, civil service entrance exams he proposed that specialized Uh, entrance be considered uh, he also uh, he also made gave more emphasis on the reports that are to be given to the the performance reports and the evaluation reports so that under performing how do you see the reform proposed by him and government has implemented the reading of the dead wood yes sir what what do you what are your views on it so the, the policy which he has performed and the government is trying to implement that sir i believe it is necessary to weed out the dead wood in order to have efficiency within any uh, structure it is necessary to weed out the non performing people because it not only gives incentive to the performers but it also is acts as a deterrent to other non performers and uh, relegates the st- uh, culture of mediocrity from the structure but i believe that the implementation has not been up to the mark yet because we have not seen widespread change in the culture or in the approach uh, with the okay reforms. good uh, <clears throat> accountability bureau has we all know yes sir miserably failed yes sir. become highly controversial so what in your view what should the contours of the uh, accountability bureau yes, in i mean looking in the future so the contours of the accountability bureau is that we have to define there has to be consensus across the board over what their uh, what the scope of their operations would be we have to solve the problem that if we include bureaucratic decisions within the ambit of their powers then it does not lead to more bureaucratic red tapeism we have to also uh, we have to bring a human element to their conduct because the 90 day physical remand and the way it was being abused Uh, in previous years there was an example of the university of sargodha professor who died in nap custody the such cases have to be made sure that, that this remand is a more humane in this uh, in this uh, 
uh, reason. But the main the main issue is that even when the accountability court pursues a case, such cases are not then um, prosecuted in courts. So there has to be a more synergy between NAB prosecution and the carrying out of the punishment or the trials in the accountability. How do you see plea bargain as a tool of justice? Sir, I believe it is a good incentive to, in order if a system is failing. If a system is not able to efficiently weed out corruption, then you have to rely on the on the victims that the, on the on the uh, abusers of the system to come forward and give some of the money and to just uh, whiten their name. But in efficient systems, plea bargains are not as abused as they are in our country. Because in our country, they're just, when they, they feel that they will be dragged, uh, so they, they, they just give some money and they, they're able to secure a plea bargain. What do you know about a police station? That is your second choice. If you have to uh, explain to someone as to what is the police station, how will you do it? So the police station is the integral unit of the police services um, and the police services are very important for the law and order in the society and a society without law and order cannot make neither social progress, neither economic progress, neither political progress. <coughs> so policing is a very important integral component of uh, the central unit of that component is the police station where we have uh, an SHO who is uh, normally in charge of the police station. We have the uh, we have the people who are under the SHO, the Javans of the police, and um, and they're able. They have a lot. They have a lot of dealing with the public. They have to have efficient uh, mechanisms of registering first information reports, and they also have many arbitrary powers that uh, the system has to check that they're not abused for the harm of the general public at large. What do you know about police order two thousand two? Has has it been implemented? So the police order 2002 was brought in by General Pervez Musharraf as a series of reforms. Prior to that, the police uh, the police was functioning on an outdated uh, order that was, um, if I'm not wrong, it was in uh, pre it was a colonial era police order that was based on the Irish police, and the Irish police was made just to uh, suppress the Irish revolutionaries that were there. So it was uh, it was outdated and not fit for the system. So two thousand two, the uh, police order laid more emphasis on community policing at large. It laid more emphasis on reducing the political interference in the postings of the police. Has it been able to change the colonial mindset of the police? If not uh, not uh, uh, if we see it prima facie, it has not because it wasn't implemented on a larger scale. The closest we see. It, to its implementation is in uh, Khyber Pakhtunha under the KP Police Act 2017, then KP Police Act 2020, uh, in, in which the IGs were empowered. They were empowered to uh, post their own of offices. Uh, there was a committee uh, overseeing the IG. So political supervision or political oversight was reduced or diluted in that committee. So it was a good, uh, it was a good initiative in KP and even police officers say that the KP police uh, is more professional than its counterparts in Punjab and Sindh. Then I think you're a science student, basically. Yes, ma'am. You studied physics, maths, biology. Yes, ma'am. Uh, have you heard of God particle? Ma'am, I've heard of it, but my knowledge is very superficial as to the God particle. Nowadays, in medical science, they're talking about regenerative medicine. Yes, ma'am. What is your take on that? Um, um, I, I haven't studied a lot about regenerative medicine, uh, but from the from the very terms regenerative medicine, I believe it is a concern with rehabilitation and um, it, it entails the plastic surgery department, the prosthesis department of rehabilitating or regenerating uh, the parts of the body that are lost to disease, but I, I'm not sure I'll, I'll read up on it, ma'am, because my knowledge to this extent is fairly limited. Give your career a boost with CSS PMS preparation from Civil Services Preparatory School. Join CSS PMS for on campus and online classes. Join us for your bright future. Civil Services Preparatory School, Jitan Merkel, Islamabad. Register now at 0316. Five seven zero one five nine three. Fair enough. 
Um, foreign service is your fifth option. Yes, ma'am. Why? Ma'am, uh, I'm the only son. Uh, my, we are two uh, brothers. We are brother and sister. So I don't didn't want to go away from uh, my parents to another country because I felt and the second is that I have been involved in social work. I feel deep affinity for my own people, my own culture. I have lived in different parts of the country due to my father's posting. So I wanted to stay here and to make an impact because I feel there's more to be done here in the society than going and representing the and the state and but the by country. representing abroad you're doing more favor to your people because your country is always under mm -hmm. stress from outside yes ma'am and you right. need good representatives to speak up for your country because you're serving more people yes ma'am so um, nelson mandela is your favorite person yes ma'am he is a favorite do you know he visited pakistan ma'am i didn't read about that is it I, I came to admire Nelson Mandela when I read his uh, book, Long Walk to Freedom. It was one of the first few books that I read. I took it from my father's book collection and I was very young then and since then I've been, I, I admired this personality a lot, but I didn't read about this. Either. What is your take from neither a hawk nor a dove? Ma'am, uh, neither a hawk nor a dove, book written by Ahmed Zasa Kasuri Sa. I primarily consulted it because I wanted to have more a clear understanding on the four point formula for Kashmir because I read that he was involved in that and I wanted to have a first hand account. So on that I I was able to come away from the book with this conclusion that it was a very fairly realistic and practical formula that seems to be the closest that we have come to resolving Kashmir by keeping all three stakeholders on board, Pakistan, India and the forgotten stakeholder, Kashmiri people. It had a human element to the plan and the, I came to admire that plan from this that book. Uh, other than that, I also came to see that um, he wrote a lot about his own, uh, his own uh, experiences in the foreign service. He wrote about his father's uh, political affiliation. What is Ahmed Kasuri or Khushid Mohammed Kasuri? I might be confusing the name, ma'am. It could be Urshid Mahmood Kasuri. Yeah. I might be con confusing the name. I thought so. Yes, ma'am. Uh, India is planning to hold G20 in Kashmir. In Kashmir, ma'am. Yes. What is your take on that? Um, it will be a provocative. Uh, it will be a provocative. Uh, attempt by the by the Indian Foreign Office, and it will also be if the uh, G20 leaders consent, assent, give an assent to this summit, and they attend that summit there, it will also not reflect well on Pakistan's foreign policy because then it will reflect and it will show that uh, in the wider international community, the opinion that Kashmir is still a contested state and not an internal um, state of the Indian Union. It will it will be watered down. So I feel that it will not be a good thing for the Pakistan position on Kashmir if, if that happens. And not the international community stands on Kashmir because the UN resolutions on it. Yes, ma'am. That will also be that will also be damaged if they give an assent to attending the summit there. Thank you so much, Talha. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Talha. Sir. Who did represent Muslim League in third round table conference? I'll, I'll read up on it. I think that name. There is a statement that no oligarch movement, yes. no independence. Please oppose this one. Sir, uh, this statement is considered that the nationalism that uh, demanded for a separate Muslim state sp uh, sprouts out of the oligarch movement. But I will oppose this because I think it is it goes even beyond, back than the Aligarh movement and the Aligarh movement was just a step in this ladder. The quest for a Muslim statehood in the subcontinent started when the very first, uh, when Mohammed bin Qasim landed on Sindh because a Muslim, distinct Muslim identity started to evolve and afterward with the Central Asian con conquests and with the other, uh, uh, with, the, uh, with this uh, evolution process, it was the only natural result for this distinct Muslim nationalism was separate statehood. What is the formula to divide the revenue yes, that is collected by National Finance Commission? 
सर द फॉर्मूला टू डिवाइड द रेवेन्यू इज अंडर द एन एफ सी सेवेंथ एन एफ सी अवार्ड करेंटली इट इज इट फिफ्टी सेवन पॉइंट फाइव ऑफ इट गोज टू दी प्रोविंस वेलकम टू सी एस पीज अकेडमी फॉर सी एस एस पी एम एस प्रेपरेशन सी एस एस पी एम एस तहरीरी इम्तहान के तमाम मजामी की ऑनलाइन और ऑन कैंपस तैयारी के साथ साथ सब्जेक्ट सिलेक्शन असाइनमेंट चेकिंग क्लास टेस्ट मॉक एग्जाम इंडिविजुअल टीचर डिस्कशन और फीडबैक सेशन का इनका किया जाएगा इसके अलावा एफ पी एस सी की तजवीज करदा बुक्स ऐसी बने मैरी नोट और सी एस पी पब्लिशर की बेहतरीन बुक्स मुहैया की जाएंगी not to share what is the formula that how they have divided this revenue among the federal government and provinces sir, what the, is the formula sir the uh, the formula it it is the components in the formula yes. sir the there there are four components one is on the population that yes. is uh, 82% of it is decided on population then it is on backwardness and uh, then it is inverted uh, uh, population density and 5% it has revenue generation capacity which tries to encourage provinces to generate their own revenue as well what is the total target of fbr for revenue collection for financial year 2022 2023 i mean for this year sir if i am allowed to guess i it is 7 trillion to be 700 billion yes that's yes, good uh, what is the marshall plan sir the marshall plan was uh, a post world war 2 reconstruction plan which was given by then secretary of state john marshall us secretary of state and he gave this plan in order to achieve two objectives one was to reconstruct united state markets in western europe and the other was to check the spread of communism because they felt that if the destitute uh, condition post war conditions were allowed to remain the communism will spread even further so under this plan uh, the marshal uh, uh, the secretary of state proposed giving 12 billion us dollars investing them in these different countries they were um, interest free loans and grants and uh, uh, this helped to vitalize the industry in uh, post world war 2 western europe and it, uh, but russia was not the then ussr was not what do you know about tda thal development authority sir uh, once again my knowledge to this end is limited but i think thal developmental authority is an authority functioning under the government of sindh that is uh, i'll i'll read up on it sir when the city of jorhabad as you belong to shop was established sir it was established in 1954 this was the one component of this tda thal development authority uh, many people believe that khushab is a mini pakistan yes, how sir. you describe this one sir uh, khushab can be said to be a mini pakistan because of the geographic diversity and the topography of the district because in the district we have the salt rain mountains we have uh, sakesar valley which is a tourist hot spot we have certain lakes such as uchali kabeki lake then the portion of thal desert it um, it touches khushab from, from neighboring bakhar and um, it, it touches if i am not wrong the noorpur or kaidabad the seals of khushab uh, so khushab is geographically very diverse and as pakistan is geographically very diverse we have mountains to the north then we have plateaus and then we have deserts and the arabian sea in the south my last question is that what was the impact of lucknow pact Yes, sir. For creation of Pakistan, sir, uh, the impact of Lucknow Pact it it was a pact that symbolized the Hindu Muslim unity at that time, and uh, it symbolized it uh, it established the Muslim League as a legitimate actor in the political spectrum of then United India, and under British control, and it also uh, it also set the footwork. for the future consultation and between uh, muslim league and the congress such as as uh, took place in delhi muslim proposals then nehru report then jinnah's 14 points so i believe it was a pivotal what was the main clause of this lucknow pact uh, sir i'll i'll have to read up on it sir thank you chale okay let's conclude this formulate let's have an informal discussion yes sir. ठीक है
So what do you think? What is your personal assessment about your performance? Make a self-assessment. 1 to 10 ke scale mein aajau. Where you will place yourself? I'll give myself 6 or 7 because there were some answers that I dropped, some questions. In hindsight, I could have been more articulate or more clear <clears throat> in giving those answers. So there are areas for improvement, but otherwise I try to do my best. So I'll give myself a positive score. Well, uh, you're very right. The point is, okay, there are very small things but which you need to remember. Number one to ye hai ke you must start review kare teen mahine ke newspaper. Yes, sir. Uski international news hai, national hai, or domestic. Focus karke. Right. And then I wonder you are maintaining a notebook on interview or not. Sir, I'm not maintaining a notebook per but se. This is what I am saying you. You must have a notebook, something like this. Right, sir. Write down the topic, write down one, two, three, four, five points. Sir. Okay. That you must develop at least 100, 150 topics. You. Tumari usme aa sakta hai. Yes. Sir. Reason being, <coughs> tumara jo interview hoga, to uska jo level hoga, wo bada upgrade ho jayega. Dosa number tumhe unho ne de diya hai. Uh, when they want to cross 200 se 200 se above jab jane ki aayegi, to uspe level of interview badta jayega. ठीक है तुम्हें प्रॉब्लम तुम्हारा ये हो जाएगा कि वो फोकस हो जाएंगे ज्यादा yes, कि कंटेंट्स ऑफ द रिप्लाई क्या है तो दिस इज ए ए सॉर्ट ऑफ अ कन्वर्सेशन बिटवीन यू एंड ऑल दोस पीपल सिटिंग देयर यस रिटन में तुम बैठ गए ना सो सोच के लिखता रहे पास हो गया फर्स्ट क्लास यू आर इन अ स्टेट ऑफ प्रिपेयरनेस यू आर ठीक है ना बट 70 75% तक हो I mean, there is a gunjaish hai us yes, Take it. That you need to do. Okay. Ek to ye newspaper ki karo aur us web points agar bana sakte ho to kar lo. Aur inko revision roz karo. Raat ko sone se pehle dekho yaar energy crisis pe hai kya hai. Yani jaisi Ukraine hai. Ukraine malum hai. Wo to lamba chore article aa raha hai. America is the beneficiary. Europe is the loser. China is a beneficiary, so the Saudis are beneficiaries. So who are the loser? Who are the loser? Ukraine is a loser. Things like that. You should be very clear. Yes, sir. Secondly, ये है कि तुम panel को study करो. Panel जो interview करने वाला है. जी सर. तो ये किया है या नहीं? सर वो देखा है अभी. इसके पास list है ले लो. जी सर. तो उनका उस background देख लो. मैं अगर आप इजाजत दें तो आपको पता है मैं टीडी आपसे क्यों पूछा है शायद अशफ तारड़ साहब जो है ना वो खुशाब के तीन साल टीसी रहे हैं जौहराबाद अच्छा ये जो हमारे चेयरमैन हैं अपना मेकन साहब ये कलूर कोर्ट के इनके पहले एसएस कमिश्नर कलूर कोर्ट के थे और इन्होंने ना वो जो टीडी के प्रोजेक्ट थे उनको इंप्लीमेंट किया हुआ है तो दो लोग तो वहां पोस्टेड रहे हैं बिल्कुल उसके वो आपसे पूछेंगे जी आपको पता है जोरबाद का सबसे फेमस पार्क कौन सा है <laughs> नहीं सर मैं उधर रहा उस पार्क का नाम भी शायद अशफ तारड पार्क है अब वो है ना कि तुम क्योंकि खुशाब से हो ना इसलिए है यस अदरवाइज शायद ना कहते हां तो बस मेरी तुम्हें ये एडवाइस है कि बेटा न्यूज़पेपर है पैनल को जरा स्टडी कर लो फोकस्ड जवाब दो अपने जवाब में याद करो कि दो तीन पॉइंट तुमने डिलीवर करने हैं गिव योर करियर अ बूस्ट विद सीएसएसपीएमएस प्रिपरेशन from civil services preparatory school join css pms for on campus and online classes join us for your bright future civil services preparatory school jitan markaz islamabad register now at 0316 570 1593बट यू आर गोइंग इन अ कम्पेटिटिव एग्जामिनेशन दीज मार्क्स दैट दुरानी साहब हैज गिवन आर नॉट टू मेक यू फील गुड अबाउट यू इट इज अ चैलेंज दैट विल यू बी एबल टू लिव अप टू दीज मार्क्स सो यू हैव टू वर्क हार्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन ही आर्स यू अबाउट पाकिस्तान माशा डिस्पाइट हैविंग गुड नॉलेज यू डोंट नो दैट पाकिस्तान इज पार्ट ऑफ साउथ एशियन नॉट साउथ ईस्ट एशिया that was careless on that yes, yeah sir. you have to be careful when you do your interview secondly you're a science student there'll be more questions on science and it seems you haven't worked on science yes ma'am i have 
So you have to work on science. Yes. You know, regenerative medicine is now uh, the talk of the town. Stem cell kya hota hai? Uh, how does it function? You know, all those things are now uh, en vogue. Everybody is talking about it. So you, having been a doctor, people will ask you, although you're a dentist more than, uh, yes, uh, you know, but still you would be asked questions on that. Yes, you could be asked questions on AIs, about their application, about their challenges. Favorite personalities, my dear sir, you don't put six favorite personalities. Achha, apne hobbies, hobbies ko bhi limit karo. Yes. Kyunke you will be, you, basically you're opening flanks. Jitna flank khologe, utna attack aega. Aur kahi se bhi aega. Is liye usko agar zero in karo aur usko phir defend karo. To then you are a competitor. Right. Because you are in a competition. If you make it your advantage, you can win. If you make it your disadvantage, you will lose. Okay? So, yes. because you have written that you blog, people will ask you questions. You know, why did you have stopped it? What is the Twitter? What is the Elon Musk? All sorts of questions will start coming to you. You know, playing and watching football. Football ke uska field ka kya site hai? Yes. Thik hai? Uh, who are the champions now? World Cup kis ne jeeta? Kyun jeeta? Uh, players ke naam, different countries ke, Morocco ka kya hua? Uh, you know, all those questions will come. So, we are here to guide you. Yes, and I, you are a winning horse, but focus on what you write and then defend it. Okay? I, I will work on it. Deekho, this is our best. 80 percent interview is this cheese se hoga, isi format pe. Wahan wo aap se lenge koi na koi something like. Then you have to defend what you have written on this paper. Right, sir. The 80 percent. Wo to main yahan se jaise koi shab, tumhari medicine, jo koi tumne isme likha hai. जी जी सर आई और 20% न्यूज़पेपर में होना है जी जी सर दैट इज द एरिया तो पाकिस्तान अफेयर को बहुत बेहतर करो बहुत ज्यादा क्वेश्चन पूछेंगे तन आप खुशाब में रहे नहीं हो ये कोई एक्सक्यूज नहीं है आप बहुत अच्छा पता होना चाहिए जी जी सर यार अपने वीकनेस आपने लिखे नीड टू इंप्रूव द यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ टाइम सो ये तो इस चीज को इंडिकेट करते हैं कि यू आर इनएफिशिएंट यस सर चेंज करो अच्छा आपकी वीकनेस और स्ट्रेंथ ना एक दूसरे के साथ मैच नहीं कर रही तो इनको भी एक दफा देख लो यहां पे आपने कहा परसिस्टेंट रेजिलिएंट देन आप कह रहे हैं नीड टू इंप्रूव द यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ टाइम ये इनएफिशिएंसी की तरफ जाता है इसको थोड़ा सा बेहतर कर लो एनी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम योर साइड नहीं नहीं सर इट वाज इट वाज अ ग्रेट सेशन वैल्यूएबल फीडबैक तो ओके गुड ठीक है